coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll meet a team of people traveling across the state of North Dakota on horseback to raise money for cancer. A big international ag bioscience conference comes to the region for the first time. We'll hear why it's important to producers. And we'll show you a new facility designed to improve cattle operations. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. An important event was held in the region this week, highlighting the latest and greatest innovations in ag. It's called the Agricultural Bioscience International Conference, or ABIC. For 20 years, it's been held all over the world, but this was the first time in the U.S. It's considered the premier global meeting promoting innovation in agricultural bioscience. What a wonderful opportunity to host the first time in, in the United States here in Fargo, North Dakota to showcase North Dakota agriculture, upper Midwest agriculture, the fertile soils, the wonderful practices and systems we have in place. I think it's a great way to showcase science, advances in technology, and agriculture all in one. Hundreds of ag scientists from around the world gathered at the event. Kevin Folta is a molecular biologist and chairman of horticultural sciences at the University of Florida. He talked with Michael Pates about finding new ways to make food better with less input and convincing the public it's safe. Dr. Folta told the audience that they first must win people's hearts before they win their minds. We have to speak to people in a much different way. We have to first understand what their concerns are, make sure that they understand that we understand. Then we have to go ahead and talk about things that get us excited about being scientists, the values that we hold, and how those values really do reflect what most people feel in society. At that point, our information can flow, and the data and the statistics have a good logical framework to hang on, and people do change their hearts and minds. Maybe talk a little bit about what products probably could be there if we didn't have uh, philosophical arguments. The public has financed, in no small way, huge innovations. And whether it's celiac safe wheat, whether it's peanuts that don't cause allergens, allergies, whether it's strawberries that grow without fungicide and without pesticides, whether it's uh, uh, oranges that can survive disease, all these innovations are out there, hundreds of them, thousands of them, yet we don't use them because the high cost of deregulation and then the skepticism in the public once it's deregulated. This business about resistant uh, weeds is the one area that I'm really interested to see how they'll solve. Well, it's a problem in that every time we create a solution, we're really just creating um, a, another mechanism that nature will find a way around. I mean, it's happened with everything. Anytime you have resistance to disease, whether time you have resistance to insects, uh, nature finds a way to come around that block that you've created with technology, whether it's genetic engineering or natural resistance. So it's going to be an, a continual battle that's going to require more science, not less, uh, more investment, not less, and new innovations in order to keep agriculture sustainable. Dr. Folta urged the ag science community to always engage in the conversation, but to listen first. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. Another keynote speaker was Greenpeace co-founder, now independent environmentalist, Patrick Moore. He talked with Jonathan Knutson about his vision for a sustainable future. GMOs are highly controversial. Patrick Moore is a scientist, an environmentalist who strongly supports their use. People are basically taking advantage of the fact that a very small percentage of the population actually understands DNA and genetics and breeding and all of that. There's always going to be people that will take a new thing that people don't understand and use it to scare them. And that's what we have here. It's as simple as that. There is no devil or ghost in the seed that can harm us. In a way, that's why they focus on the corporation side of things, as if Monsanto is evil. It's not the seeds, it's Monsanto that's evil. But even if Monsanto was evil, as long as the seeds aren't evil, then they're not going to hurt anybody. And you know, these people are trying to improve agriculture. 
it, it, no, nobody's going to succeed by making a worse seed, one that doesn't work as well. And now we have these genetically modified varieties that are coming along that benefit humans, not just farmers, but all people who eat. And that includes golden rice to eliminate vitamin A deficiency. How can golden rice improve the world's nutrition? I mean, there's nothing bad about essential nutrients. And with golden rice, that's what you're talking about, putting an essential nutrient into a, a, a rice that didn't have it before. And that's causing death and blindness among millions of children. Surely that is a better thing to do than to continue with the blindness and death. But you've got Greenpeace and their allies viciously campaigning against golden rice, saying it's fake and that it's an illusion and that it could cause environmental and health problems, which is completely ridiculous. There's no way that beta carotene can cause a health problem. All it can do is cause a health benefit because you need it to survive. If golden rice was a cure for a disease, like a medicine for malaria, it would have been adopted 10 years ago, as long as it was first proven that it didn't cause more harm than good. But if it killed the malaria fluke and didn't kill the patient, it would be adopted pretty quickly. Big picture question. Can the world provide enough nutritious, affordable food without biotechnology? It's pretty hard to imagine how we could feed 9 billion people, which there's going to be before it starts leveling off around the middle of the century, without biotechnology. I mean, it's not just biotechnology, though. It's the whole of precision agriculture and modern farming technology, all, all the different things that add together. The fertilizers, the pesticides, the genetics, the soil management. It has vastly increased yield. And the best thing about increasing yield, aside from being able to feed more people, is that when you increase the yield, you don't need as much land to grow the same amount of food, and that saves wild nature. Moore still believes in protecting the environment, but he also believes the environmental movement took a wrong turn. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. The North Dakota and Minnesota Ag Commissioners talk about the current challenges in agriculture. We'll have more from ABIC after this. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Make the ultimate upgrade this harvest with Goodyear LSW tires. LSW improves your footprint by up to 37% and gives you the ability to carry larger loads at lower inflation pressures, reducing soil compaction for a better yield next season. LSW tires are proven to reduce road load, making sure you can run at full speed from field to field, expediting your harvest. Visit your local Graham Tire to make the switch. When you reap the benefits of LSW tires, you'll know you're in Graham country. The American farmer. You nurture the land, the livestock, and the future of agriculture. Nationwide and your local On Your Side Farm certified agent stand with you to help protect your farm and ranch operations. We're in this together. I've been working with farmers and ranchers for over 30 years, and I understand the demands and risks they face. It's important for me to build a personal relationship with each and every customer. It's what I do. I'm Ray Trudeau, an elite farm certified agent, and I'm on your side. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. <coughs> Well,
Welcome back to Ag Week TV. We are at the Agriculture Biotechnology International Conference in Fargo at the Fargo Dome. And joining us now is the Minnesota Ag Commissioner, Dave Fredrickson. Thanks for joining us here oh, today. You're very welcome. Good to be here. What are some of the biggest issues or challenges facing your state in ag for your producers? Well, right now, obviously, it's profitability. Uh, we're really concerned about that. Uh, balance sheets look reasonably good, but uh, cash flow is really tough right now. And that's sort of the 800-pound gorilla in the room, especially when you even talk about technology, because in order for technology to be incorporated, there has to be profitability in agriculture. And unfortunately, uh, profitability is, uh, is not there right now. And animal health issues are important to you as well, considering we just came off of last year with the avian flu. Yes, they sure are. Uh, we had a significant loss in the Midwest, uh, Iowa, with something in excess of 25 million birds. We uh, were hit with about a 9 million bird loss, both turkeys and, uh, and chickens. Uh, we looked to the new diagnostic lab, for example, in Wilmer that will assist us in making sure that we're on the right track when it comes to response to disasters like high path avian influenza. Joining us now is North Dakota Ag Commissioner Doug Goring. And Doug, what are some of the main issues that you want to focus on for your state or that should be focused on? Agriculture is sometimes uh, very good at conveying these are our problems, what type of solutions exist out there. One thing about technology and research and is it takes a long time. This isn't something that, oh yeah, we identified the problem, next year we're going to have it solved. In many cases, you might have decades that you're going to have to invest into this. And so you have land-grant universities, you also have uh, uh, the private sector that are working to address some of these issues, and, but they're also investing. And they have to spend those dollars wisely and well, and I know that's, those are real big challenges. You talked about government regulation, uh, maybe too much regulation sometime? That's always been a big problem, and it seems to be getting worse. Many times there's these perceived problems that exist and they think by regulating it to the lowest common denominator we're going to solve the problem. In many cases they're creating unintended consequences. There are unrealistic expectations sometimes that are placed upon agriculture and when that happens the net effect can be production, it could be economics, you could really hurt uh, agricultural production, you could hurt farmers and ranchers in their ability to continue to provide food, feed, fiber, and fuel for our nation, for our consuming population. Doug Goring, Commissioner, Ag Commissioner of North Dakota, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Thank you. Coming up next on Ag Week TV, a check on your agri weather forecast. And later, we'll take you on a trip across the state on horseback, all to raise money for charity. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. 
The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Ag Week TV weather is brought to you by Kaler Farms. Weather portion of Ag Week now. You know, the more things have changed the last couple of months, the more they have stayed the same. Another round of flooding rains in the upper Midwest, parts of the Great Plains the last week, and potential for more rainfall here the next few days. The pattern continues to be warmer than average, so it's that combination of warm and wet that really started itself in the earlier part of summer and continues now as we get through the mid part of September. In this particular round, it's high humidity. Not so much like high summertime humidity in the northern plains, but from about South Dakota, southern Minnesota southward, it's been a lot like summer the last few days and more of that on the way. What's happened is this. The jet stream pattern has gone into a very high amplitude pattern across North America. And this particular part has done a couple of things. It's brought a low pressure system off the west coast and this lower part of the jet has tapped into the residual moisture from a weak tropical system which moved ashore in California late last week. And that tropical moisture is one of the reasons why we've been seeing so much rainfall. Well this low now in a weakened state will continue to meander through the central plains. I don't think it has the punch that it did over the weekend and late last week but it's still going to be probably some wet weather for parts of the Great Plains maybe the northern Great Plains. And notice also the primary jet really is cut off from this little circulation, and that's going to keep the Arctic air and the cold weather pretty well stuck up in the Arctic. So the pattern across much of the central and northern United States will be not only a fairly wet one, but also a fairly warm one. All week long, this low is going to slowly track east. As it finally moves east, potential is there for warm but maybe a little bit drier weather for at least a few days. Here's what we're looking at. First of all, as we go to the forecast, in terms of temperatures, and in general, just as over the next two weeks, I'm expecting a lot of above average weather over the central and eastern United States. The only place that will be cool, I think, will be the Rocky Mountains. But from the southwest through the south up through the middle west, some above average temperatures. And in terms of rainfall, this week will continue to be fairly wet. First of all, tropical moisture continues in the southeast this time of year. Much of the western United States, I think, will be quite dry this week. There will be areas of fairly heavy rainfall from the northern Great Plains, the Great Lakes, back down through the Middle West as far as this week goes. Next week, it still will be wet, hopefully not quite as consistently wet in the northern plains, but the potential is there. The west coast area is still looking pretty dry. Tropical moisture down along the Gulf and hopefully Hopefully things will slow down, but it still looks like a wet two week period for much of the northern plains. So here we are in the middle of fall, still looking at the potential for heavy rain. The Arctic air is stuck up in the north, so the first half of fall looks wet. The second half, probably a bit drier, but we'll see. <laughs> Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. The American Farmer. You nurture the land, the livestock, and the future of agriculture. Nationwide and your local On Your Side Farm Certified Agent stand with you to help protect your farm and ranch operations. We're in this together. I've been working with farmers and ranchers for over 30 years, and I understand the demands and risks they face. It's important for me to build a personal relationship with each and every customer. It's what I do. 
I'm Ray Trudeau, an Elite Farm Certified Agent, and I'm on your side. Make the ultimate upgrade this harvest with Goodyear LSW tires. LSW improves your footprint by up to 37% and gives you the ability to carry larger loads at lower inflation pressures, reducing soil compaction for a better yield next season. LSW tires are proven to reduce road load, making sure you can run at full speed from field to field, expediting your harvest. Visit your local Graham Tire to make the switch. When you reap the benefits of LSW tires, you'll know you're in Graham country. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Three people saddled up and rode across North Dakota on horseback to raise money and awareness for a cause near to their hearts. The ride is called Cowboy Up, Journey for a Cure. Me and Bruce have talked about doing this trip a few times and, and uh, we finally decided it's time we better do it. That's when Scott Olerud, Bruce Vandenindy and his wife Carol decided to hit the road on their horses. We caught up with them as they unloaded all for the love of horses and saddled up. The plan? Travel 373 miles on horseback across the state of North Dakota from border to border. We'll be averaging about 25 miles a day and we are going to rotate horses. We're bringing extra horses so we're going to switch out horses. My personal horse, he's 25 years old but he's in real good shape so he's ready. It's more than just a 16-day ride. We want to make a difference. It's a journey. A journey to raise awareness and money for cancer. We're doing this for those who had cancer, for those loved ones that have to help and watch those people go through that and those that died. Sorry. For Carol, it's personal. I put my sister and my brother on my horse. They both passed away from cancer and I have my mother on the other side who's my survivor's side which ironically is one person and she's had it three times and she's currently in full remission. The voyage is designed to raise money for the Roger Maris Cancer Center in Fargo. They treated my family members so it's kind of a family hospital for us unfortunately. Sure. I was lucky enough to get to tag along for a few miles on my horse Gunner. And we're on the first leg of the trip. We have you have 15 more days to go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hopefully I can make it to Castleton. <laughs> It's not easy for those that have cancer, so I, the last thing I want to do is whine when I get sore. Riders are encouraged to join on any portion of the trip. It's fun to see all the support and your friends coming out to join you here on this first leg. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It, uh, you know, a lot of people are taking off two weeks of work or three weeks, and that's a, asking a lot, you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You don't have to ride a horse. You don't even have to be into horses to be involved with this. You can do the silent auction, the bake sale, the dance, come for supper, and even if you don't even do none of that, just have been there. Shows those that we care, and we're here, no matter what, no matter what the event is, that we're here for you. The ride ends this weekend at the Montana border. They had 16 stops along the route, with most of them holding a fundraiser. If you'd like to donate, you can check them out on Facebook at Cowboy Up Journey for a Cure. Up next on AgWeek TV, we'll show you a new state-of-the-art research facility dedicated to improving cattle operations around the region. My name is Joel Kaler, owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain. Instead of being able to hit that idler, our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. I'm Jenny Garth, 
And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins, with proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm commitment. It's why we can say there's nothing standard about Superior. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable, Trust it. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1 800 811 2580. The new cow calf education and research facility is open at South Dakota State University. It replaces the 50 year old original building, which was destroyed by a fire. Ag Week's Michelle Rook explains what it will mean for the region's cattle industry. The teaching and research done here at the new cow-calf unit at South Dakota State University will have a positive impact on the state's cattle industry. Strong industry support was reflected at the dedication of the $6 million state-of-the-art facility. It's the newest, finest re cattle research facility in the United States, probably the world. It features an 80-seat classroom for training students, and the calving and working areas allow industry instruction on animal care and low-stress handling. We have a bud box with a two-into-one alley into a very nice $28,000 silencer hydraulic chute. The Monoslope barn has water intake monitoring and 48 electronic feed bunks for nutrition research. We've got a really efficient individual feeding system in place where we can track feed intake, we can uh, apply individual animal treatments and capture all of that data and, and do it really efficiently. And those research findings will improve the profitability of cattle production in the region for years to come. In Brookings, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. The unit was built with industry and individual donations. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.